claustrophobic is just a word that seems to follow me around with 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 my movies and even like even other writing and stuff people say claustrophobic or contained or so that much just followed me but if there's anything in quietly you got to think about you know the the 21 22 year old version of me who wrote it who had already made two movies and at a certain point you can only do so much before you're just trying to get shit off your chest mean you're trying to get the meanness out of you and hope the meanness and the the cynicism and i don't know like the, your darker look on what the future is going to hold you're trying to get it off your chest and and it hopefully it turns into some kind of poetry as it comes off good or bad poetry but you got to get it off your chest you know and i think I think I got a lot off my chest from Kylie on by. <laughs> You know, I was like 20, 22 or 23 when we made it. And I think I was just wondering like where my place was, you know, like you always wind up at home and like the world is vast, but your world is very small. And I think it, you know, trying to figure out where, where you belong is a big part of Quietly on By. Like that's what it is. He just wants to be a part of something. And, uh, yeah, I just think when you're shooting in your hometown without permits, it's there's a safety and security there because chances are you know somebody, <laughs> you know, or you could just be like, I, I live here. I can do whatever I want here. This is my home. You can't stop me from shooting here. The character of Aaron came directly from somebody that me and Tony worked with at the time who reminded us a lot of us when we were, you know, he was a little younger than us. So maybe like 18, 19. So when we were 18, 19, it's like, oh, we were kind of like that. We were, you know, just not quite sure how to be amongst people, you know, just how, how not to act. So Tony really borrowed that guy's speech patterns and like his inability to like be interrupted, <laughs> you know, uh, and just like how he was nervous, quick talking and, and all those things. And we just made it that guy, you know, cause he was sweet and we were, you know, he was easy to hang out with, but also it was also like, well, that was him, you know, it's just one of those, one of those people, you know? And I think that's why he had those two friends who like understood him and were his friends. And we were at an airport in Florida coming home from a festival for our previous home. And we saw a guy, a, a kid who was just walking from one place to another. And we were both like, that's Aaron. Like that, you know, the hair, it's like he was kind of like moving, he like led with his body, you know? And so we were just following him around and, you know, just wound up talking to him for a little bit. And he, he was like, I'm going to do that guy. I was like, it's great. So we maybe talked to him for two minutes, followed him around for maybe two minutes. But the thing about Tony is he doesn't need much to go really big with, with, with whatever the idea is, you know, that's, that's how he is. I... Don't build characters from nothing. So there's always a little bit of something. Like with Aaron, um, I had, you know, a, a major depressive episode where I just lost it. Like that opening s screening and screaming and crying thing. Like that happened to me after I wrapped my second feature. I just couldn't keep my feet on the ground and I lost my mind for a little bit. So it started there, you know. Um, so like the details of that, like, where, where, where do you start? And it's like, okay, well, what are some things? It's like, well, I hate my fucking job waiting tables. Okay. So it's like waiting tables. Well, you know what? Even if I worked as, you know, I, I got a job with the village, be a better job, but I fucking hate that job too. It's like, okay, well, so how about we have a guy who can't work right now because he cannot function, <laughs> you know, like around other people. But me and Tony were in a band together first, and then the movie thing kind of took over for me. But And we acted in our first film together, we wrote it together. But what is appealing about somebody like 
uh, Tony is that he, when you give him a, the task, not only does he want to do it better than anybody else ever possibly could, but he also wants to think of things that nobody else would think of doing. And he doesn't want to discuss at length about this, but he is always, he's got tons of ideas and it's always like, okay, calm down. You know, like he just, he just, he wants to do good and he wants to go further than other people will. Like, I know we keep bringing up where he beat himself up, but cause I just watched that part. He was really hitting himself and it was like, okay, we need to do this in, in one take. You get it all out of your system. Because like when he threw himself on the ground, like he wasn't, you know, the camera follows him, but like he didn't say he was going to do that, but he, <laughs> you know, like when we got done, it's like, that was great, man. That was great. Like, should, should I do it again? I, I, I think if I do it again, we can, <laughs> you know, it's just like, okay, you know what? Do it again. <laughs> you know, go ahead. But if you hurt yourself, <laughs> you know, he's like, I'm not going to, it's, it's, it's fine. You know? So he brings, he brings nothing but energy and ideas to what he's been asked to do. And he also does that weird thing that actors do where like at a certain point he forgets that the script exists. And I think, I think if you were to ask Tony, he would be like, he thinks he, he like ad-libbed all those lines. Do you know what I mean? Like he just, he just takes it all in. He's like, isn't it weird in the movie where I go and I sit down next to her? And it's like, it was in the script like, like, like that. Like, <laughs> you know, he just takes it all in and, you know, that's find a line that he's ever said in a movie where it doesn't look like he just thought of that, you know, find a moment that doesn't look spontaneous with that guy. It's, it's insane, <laughs> you know? So yeah. He's my kind of nuts. The original idea for Quietly on By was going to be all in one house because I came up, I had seen this contest where they would give, where you made a movie in 20, in 48 hours, you, you, you made one movie. So I was like, oh, I'll do it all in a house and we'll shoot through the windows and stuff. So in a lot of Quietly on By, when you're shooting through the windows, there's a lot of stuff through the windows, that's all sort of like remnants of the movie that was supposed to be shot all in the house. The feedback that I got for this idea was so bad, so stupid, just so stupid that I found it very inspiring to complete the project and do it anyway, you know, because it was so bad. It was like, this isn't reasonable to do in this amount of time. I'm like, it's all in one house. What are you people talking about? Like, I, I, like rejected me. It's not like they gave you money or anything like that. They just like wouldn't allow it into the 48 hour, the 72 hour, whatever the fuck it was. Um, a festival thing. So I think in the movie I did previous, you know, I was trying to make like Magnolia or like make, I don't know, some other movie that you know, I really liked, you know, my version of something, you know, there's a lot of plot and, you know, there's a lot of over the top stuff in the movie I did before this. And at the heart of it, the stuff I liked shooting the most was the people talking, the people ad-libbing, you know, um, um, none of the story stuff was engaging to me, you know? So like the tire swing was the beginning of quietly on by and then it was all built up from there and like the tire swing thing we shot and you know we shot and shot and shot and it was so much fun to just shoot that like when lonnie chases danielle around the house that was something that came out of me and tony fooling around in between takes because he made a joke about our first movie and most people had worked on the first movie too and i was like it's funny that's really funny and I threw down my script and I started chasing him and he ran away. And in the next take, like Lonnie and Danielle like kind of imitated that energy, you know? And like so much good stuff came out of that. So I think just that and trying to stay pretty honest about like stupid things that I'd done in my life, you know, like stupid lies I had told in my life, you know, stupid things I'd done to impress people, you know, just imagining out from there, you know? So the schedule of Quietly I Buy was just as much a part of the energy of what was going to go into the film. The two previous films were both shot over the course of 10 months in, I think, 14 and 18 days. 
So it was like not a lot of shooting all this time. It was very, very stressful. So quietly on by, I had all the equipment left over from the previous two movies, all of it. All I needed to buy was the tapes. I had the editing, I had lights, I had, I had everything. So I also, uh, so I had $755 and I made a schedule for 14 straight days of shooting. So I think there was always shooting day and night. Um, about halfway through the shoot, we had a complete meltdown and everybody was angry at me. And some, some shit needed to be said <laughs> about how tired everybody was and how much they've been working and how not everybody's having all the fun that you guys are having. And we got, we got past it, you know, like we got past it. And we're like, but at the end of the day, we might be tired and angry, but we're really having a great time. Everybody's doing what they want to be doing. Everybody wanted to get into production. Everybody got along. Every, you know, we loved eating. And, you know, by the 10th day, we were all talking. We were only talking in British accents by like the 10th day and only talking about CG. But now we're going to do this scene. It was going to be a CG type um, thing. And, you know, like that that's, was the last four days of shooting. And it was because we were fucking, we lost it. So, <laughs> you know, so, you know, we had a little bit, you know, when you see that money in the box, in Aaron's box, like that was our cash on hand. And it was mainly, you know, singles. I kind of folded up and kind of padded in there. But because I remember Tammy... Um, who was going to be you know, kind of an all-purpose crew guy? I had the I was prepping the box, and she's like, "Is that the budget?" And I laughed. I was like, "No, but kinda, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Here's some gas money, <laughs> you know." So yeah, we had to shoot those pretty early because the money was going to dwindle away, you know, that that we had and all this stuff. Yeah, I remember one time Danielle and Tony went to go eat on their own. And I was like, where are you guys? And they're like, well, we're going to get some meals. Like, you come eat with, with us. Like, everybody needs, to, everybody needs to be here. You know, like, you guys are going to be late. Like, we have a schedule. Like, if we lose the day, you know, it was a lot. It was intense. You need days off. You know, as you get into working with SAG and stuff like that, you see that as well. They can't work a 12-hour without this much break. And, you know, there might be a pain in the ass, but there's a fucking reason <laughs> that you don't do it. You know, it's like, because you will lose your mind. I had a guy read for the part that I played and he was very good and very charming. And I went home and I put myself in front of the camera and I found out that I'm not good at auditioning. And I'm like, fuck it, I'm doing it anyway. You know, it's, it's my movie, <laughs> you know? Because I mean, that's where it all started. You know, like the acting thing was, was always something that I, I wanted to do. One of those things that you were afraid to admit that you wanted to do, you know? I'm not from an acting world, you know, like even I wanted to take acting classes when I was like a nine or 10 year old. I remember watching Goonies and I was like, I want to do that. How do I do that? And my dad was just like, I don't know, you take acting classes, you start going on auditions. And I was like, okay, I, I want to do that. And then it, just, it was just dead on arrival, <laughs> you know? So, um, so, you know, I think, you know, that actually that's kind of like a res kind of a revelation too you know like my dad died when I was 15 and I, j I started making movies you know two maybe three years later you know like there's you know like a death anxiety that I joke about but you know if you want to do something you 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 do it the ins you bring the insecurity along with you you don't make it other people's problems and when I talk to younger filmmakers who talk about acting in their movies who say like I don't know. I don't feel like it. It's like, you want somebody to tell you you're good. You want somebody to give you permission to do it, which is something I didn't learn until even years later. And it's like, Oh yeah. Like when you're showing rough cuts to move of, of your film to other people at a certain point, you just want somebody to tell you you're good. And at a certain point you have to grow out of that. At a certain point you, you have to be the person who says, this is, this is it. This is, this is where I stand. Yeah. So. I have a really bad affliction, which is I really like my movies. Like, I think they're good. I think they're scrappy. I think they are what they are. And, and like, warts and all, you know, I, I like them. Um, and when I, when somebody, like, buys a DVD, you know, online or, you know, asks me you know, about it, or if I go, I've, I've been trying to put them online for, like, 15 years. I'll get around in one of these days, but... Um, 
and when I pop them in and just watch scenes or whatever, I was like, oh, I, I like this. This was a this was a funny time in my life. This was something that's interesting, and I think these jokes are funny, and I think these shots are kind of cool, and you know, I I like it. Quietly on by as I look at it now, how many years later, it's it's really a movie about the the disintegration of like a friend group that won't be a friend group anymore. Like those guys aren't going to be in touch in a very short amount of time. Right now, they're they're each other's entire world, and you know. You, you go through, you shed friends, no matter how close you were, you know, in high school and even, you know, a couple of years after. It's like they just start going away. And I think Quiet Lamb is a really good movie about like the last breaths of those, you know, uh, those kind of relationships. But, you know, you stay true to, you know, what what feels right. Again, there's that, you know, work before comprehension kind of thing and like oh look what look what we did you know we made this thing that's still true today even though it was 20 years ago you know which is which isn't saying much but at the same time it kind of is you know we had the left